Hey guys, welcome back. Better than a Let's Play episode 22. This is season 2 Moon Quest edition. I'm an Igneous, and today we are continuing construction of the exploding cow factory on the moon. We've got our main facility basically done, for the most part, almost. And now we've got the floor of the exploding cow facility done. You can see we've got that stepped floor that will be used to direct the flow of water to gather up all of the cow bits flying all over the place. And walls made out of glass. Very important, the walls made out of glass, because this is what's going to allow us to enjoy the exploding cow factory. Otherwise, it would just be a, a mob grinder that we ignore until we go to the chest to gather up our loot. Now, I'm not really using any kind of reinforced material for the walls. I thought about it. Uh, I looked at how much iron it would cost to turn that much glass into advanced blast resistant whatever, whatever. Too much. Way too much. So we're taking our chances and most importantly, the exploding cow factory will be detached from the rest of the facility. So if we do happen to get a meteor busting a hole in the factory, as long as it doesn't hit the cow spawners, I don't really care because the, the cows are going to die with or without the hole and we're just going to do our thing and let them die one way or the other. If we notice a hole, we'll patch it because Murphy's Law says if we ignore it, the next meteor is going to come down exactly where the first one did and that's when we're likely to run into problems. But for now, we've got uh, some issues with not only chunks loading, uh, monsters. Uh, running around making a mess. I decided to use the marble pavers to do a little bit of highlighting on the, the structures themselves. I noticed previously I was out running around after meteors, uh, you know, meteorites that had landed and I wanted to gather them up for the iron, and I realized that it's kind of difficult to see the facilities when they're, they've got that layer of moonstone above, and then the walls are basically moonstone and that little layer of black. Kind of tough to see when chunks are unloading and the, the you see the sky there is black. So we're basically using this little strip of white to increase visibility. So when we're out bombing around trying to find our way home, I could just I could just add a waypoint to the map. But I decided that we would do it with a little bit of detailing and add the waypoint later. And that way we're we're kind of playing along with the whole situation. Uh, the monsters are, are becoming less and less of an issue. You can see the guy up on the roof, uh, the, the creeper. Now he's got a spider friend. They can't touch me because I'm indoors and I'm relatively uh, well lit. So this brings us to the creation of the actual cow spawning area. You can see I just built a nerd pole up to nowhere apparently and did nothing uh, that involved dirt. No, really, we, we did... We built kind of a little square. It'll come into view momentarily. The whole idea is that I don't want this vast area taking up space uh, where cow bits could potentially land and then despawn because there's nothing gathering them up. I want just enough room to get the cows to spawn. And then when they explode, most of the cow bits will fly off the platform where they've spawned into the water and it'll be pushed down into the hopper down at the bottom of the floor there. So as Spartan as possible in terms of resources and we're, we're going pretty zen with this whole thing. It's just the natural flowing water gathering the exploding cows on the moon. That's, that's zen. Uh, one of the things that I hadn't really properly taken into account here um, was the, the spawning conditions for the cows. And I actually ended up, I'm, I'm just going to be honest, I spawned in some grass blocks just to see, uh, because those four, you see those four purple blocks, those are the soul cages with the cow spawner. Not only did I find out that I didn't realize what the, the cow spawning requirements were, I also found out you only need one cow shard, and then you can just keep right clicking on the soul cages with the cow shard. You can have four soul cages loaded with cows from one soul shard cow so i didn't realize that i've got four soul shards cow uh but we'll keep that in mind for the future and you can see now after a bit of a break i went and did my homework legitimized the acquisition of grass blocks by making a silk touch excavator 
I'll show you that momentarily. And also took some of the grass that I had lying around in a chest. I got grass and damp grass. I don't know what mod adds to damp grass, but there's a mod that adds it. Uh, and you gather it up just like you would gather normal grass while you were running around. I had some of both. And then I planted it here on regular grass blocks. And the cows started spawning. And you can see, once we added the water, it all flowed down into the middle very nice and neat. And now the cows are exploding. And their bits are flying all over the damn place. They're landing in the water. And then the water is pushing it all down to the bottom. And you can see even the cows that fall off end up going all the way down to where the hopper is. They all suffocate no matter whether they're standing on the little square or they're pushed off into the water and then they explode and we gather up the bits. So the exploding cow factory proof of concept is a resounding success for once. The key though is to make sure that you've got grass blocks and damp grass. Um, the grass that I planted on it maybe it would have worked normally but I noticed I had just regular dirt blocks and I put the, the grass on it and it despawned after a while. So maybe it was because it was regular dirt. I don't know. I tried it with the damp grass and it worked fine. Oh, that's what it was. If I use regular grass, I could put it on a grass block. And if I tried to put it on the adjacent block, it wouldn't work. So I could only have one chunk of grass for every second grass block. With the damp grass, I can put them beside one another so I get twice as much grass. Uh, I don't know if that was going to impact the uh, the number of cows spawning. Didn't really care. It wasn't uh, that big of a deal. It was just the experimentation, and this is where it brought us. Exploding cow factory. Look at all the bits. See, we've got some bits on the square, and that's okay. They're, they're just kind of hanging out, spinning around there. Most of it is going down into the chest. After this little experiment, we wound up with one and a half stacks of beef and just over one full stack of leather so leather and food were pretty well taken care of for the foreseeable future so now here back in the overworld there were just a couple of things that i wanted to show you before we move on with the next segment on the moon and that was exactly how i got the grass blocks and the grass plant like these grass plants you see here growing out of the ground onto the moon in case I wasn't absolutely clear. Like I said, I originally spawned them in just to test. And then once I found out that it was really the solution was getting the grass blocks and the right kind of grass onto the moon, I legitimized my adventures by building a silk touch excavator so that I could dig up these guys. Now, Tinker's Construct actually makes this pretty easy compared to getting silk touch on a vanilla tool. Just like we did with our glass making excavator so that we can dig sand and it auto smelt and we end up we dig it and we pick up glass blocks you can make one of these guys a silky jewel attach that to the tool as one of the modifiers and you get silky which is silk touch one very easy to make the silky jewel first you have to make four silky cloth which is an aluminum brass nugget or a gold nugget gold gold nuggets everybody knows about those gold ore berries uh, and some string, spiders, flax, whatever, make silky cloth, you make four of those, and then you combine it with an emerald, just like this, makes the silky jewel, and then you attach it to your tool in the appropriate Tinker's Construct Bench, whatever, I don't remember the exact name. It's the one that you use to attach all the modifiers to your tools. So that's what I made, and then you can see here, if I pick the right, there we go, when we dig up dirt, we don't get just dirt. If it's got grass on it when we dig it up, it's got grass on it when we pick it up. So that's step one, uh, is getting these grass blocks. Not difficult at all, and not expensive, really, uh, to get it on a, on a Tinker's Construct tool. The other thing is the grass itself. Now, I've got shears on my power fist, which is why you don't see me holding actual shears. Regular good old-fashioned shears will work just as well to harvest grass um, that you can then take and plant on the moon on top of the grass blocks that you're bringing from your silk touch tool and i'm hoping did i yes this is what i was talking about there's regular grass and then there's damp grass i don't know what adds the damp grass but this is what i ended up using because it would allow me to plant the grass side by side whereas this one it wouldn't allow me to to plant grass 
directly beside a block that already had grass on it. So that was one of the things. The damp grass is what worked really well. If you're having trouble finding it, start with the grass. And uh, if you come across damp grass later, you can always go and add it. It's not that big of a deal. That's how we got our little spawning square into the Exploding Cow Factory. Not that much of an ordeal, really, once we got it sorted out. So now, uh, we need to head back to the moon. And we need to talk about sealing our central structure against the evils of the moon atmosphere. Look at these guys standing on the roof. And me, like a derp, leaving the door wide open. There we go. Uh, we're going to go through here. So here, once again, we're on the move. We're inside. I've added a little bit uh, structurally. I've made a little hallway, and that's going to be basically the, the central area of our airlock. We'll jump up here and, and take a look. You can see I've left the, the holes for the structure of the airlock that we're going to build. And then we've got an opening out there. That was the original opening right there. And then I added this hallway so that we'd have a little bit of space. What we want to do is we want to make these airlock um, blocks. We need an airlock controller for each one of these guys. Did I, did I lose one of my controllers? Say it ain't so. I may have lost one of my airlock controllers and that makes me horribly, horribly sad. How could we have lost it? There it is. Whew. Thankfully, uh, dimensions don't stay loaded in between so things don't despawn. I feel much better now. Anyways, you need uh, airlock controller for each door that you want as part of this airlock system and airlock frames to fill in the rest of the blocks. It's kind of like making a nether portal. You don't have to have blocks in the corners and the airlock you can make I don't know what the size limitations are, but you do have some room in terms of how big you want your own airlock door to be. So I've got enough materials for what I want here. Very, very easy to set up. We take one of the airlock controllers. We'll take a look at the recipe momentarily because there's nothing crazy, but we'll just show you how we set up. Then we fill in the perimeter of the doorway with the airlock frames. And then we right click the controller. This I always like to be empty-handed when I right-click machines. It's just something that I've gotten into the habit of doing. And then you can set the parameters for what makes the door open. I don't want it to open on a redstone signal. Uh, I want it to open if I'm within a meter of the frame. And that will allow me to basically come and go without having to interact with anything. It just seems silly to set up like a pressure plate or something like that to trigger the airlock when you can just have it do it automatically the same way without the pressure plate. So we're setting it so that if we're within one meter, it will open the door. Now, that's exactly the, the shenanigan that's going on here. So when we get close to it, it opens for us, we pass through and it seals behind us. So that's one door. It's not an airlock with just one door. That's why we've got this little hallway. The whole idea is that inside here is going to be oxygen so we can breathe without our oxygen tanks. Out here is the moon, which is there's no oxygen. So what we want to do is set up a little passage here so that when this door is open, there's a door over here that's closed. When we're coming over this way, this door opens and that one is closed. So the only area that's changing between oxygen and no oxygen is this little hallway instead of the big area inside. That's the whole idea behind an airlock, is two doors with a little room in between that acts as a buffer to contain whatever it is you want to contain. So here, we're gonna set it up exactly the same. And then we right click, player is within one meter. Now it'll behave exactly the same. As soon as we get to within one block, it opens and then it closes behind us. That's it, that's all there is to the airlock. Now for the actual materials, uh, it's it's not that bad. It's not that bad at all. Airlock. The the airlock frames uh, a little bit spendy. It seems it makes four blocks, but it requires compressed aluminum, compressed steel, and then one of these oxygen concentrators, 
which is a lot of compressed tin, some regular tin to make the canisters, compressed steel, more steel, more tin. Not a lot of varied materials, it's just one of those things, there's multiple layers to the recipe. And then here, compressed steel, compressed meteoric iron. This is what we made by smelting the stuff that we got from the meteors when we dug them up once we got to the moon. So you have to be on the moon already in order to get the materials that you need to make the airlock controller. And then the basic wafer, that was the machine, takes redstone, redstone torch, diamond, and two raw silicon, makes three of these basic wafers, make your airlock controller. You want two of these and however many you need to fill in the perimeter of your frame, that's your airlock. So we're almost there. Now, what we've got basically is this is the primary exit from the structure. You can see up here, it just kind of barely peeks up over the top of the crater. Let's get to the top of the crater. There's our lander over there. So it's, it's not a huge facility. It's just barely picking up over the crater. That one more so than this one, obviously. And the, the cow factory really is kind of detached. You see down there. I think you have to be close to the, the spawners in order for them to start spawning, which is kind of a shame, but really not that bad. This is actually advanced uh, blast resistant glass walls that I put here as part of the process. I made just enough to kind of experiment so that when it's daytime on the moon, as you can see, we've got the sun out there. Maybe it would help with the plants down there. I don't know if it did. I, I don't really at this point it's working, so I don't really care, but I just wanted to show you that. And then lastly, bouncing around shiny new airlock in and out down here this over here is the hopper at the bottom of the amphitheater where all of the exploding cow bits go dumps it into the pipes down there to a chest i'm using the thermal expansion item ducts you could be using the mechanism pipes or the build craft pipes whatever it's just a hopper into whatever you want to carry it and then down into whatever you want to hold all of your goodies and you can see this is what we've pulled out so far, like I say, I don't think that the spawners work unless you're close enough to them to trigger them, but we've already got two stacks of beef and almost one and a half stacks of leather. We're in good shape. So the next episode, we're going to finish sealing the base because we ha I want to do something with this area down here to seal it and also this entrance to that tunnel down there, just a big gash in the floor is not working for me, uh, but we're going to get something sorted out. Oh yeah. This is our oxygen setup. I promised you guys we'd take a look at it because it ended up being pretty gnarly. Uh, these are the two oxygen compressors so that I can charge up two tanks at once. They're getting oxygen from two electrolytic separators. There's one back here and another one here. You can see we've got the pipe coming out here with the oxygen goes into the side and this one pipe coming out with the oxygen goes into the side and then the hydrogen goes into the hydrogen generators, one here and one here, that are sending power to the oxygen compressors uh, and the electrolytic separators. And then in the back there, that's our water setup, whether you're using liquiducts with thermal expansion, build craft pumps, whatever you've got, all that tucked away neatly back there. It's loud, it looks funky with all the tubes and the pipes crisscrossing all over the place, but it works. And uh, I'm, I'm kind of happy with it. I kind of like it there. And I'm glad that it's over in that corner. And then we're, we're mostly over in this corner with our storage and our transportation because it's, it's pretty loud. So the next episode, I'm going to farm up the materials to make the rest of the airlock stuff that I need to enclose that. And then we're going to look at the machines that we need to create the oxygen bubble inside our facility. Once that's all set up, we're going to go off in search of the dungeon that hopefully contains the schematic for the tier 2 rocket that will take us to Mars. I hope you're enjoying what we're doing here on the moon. Please leave your comments and feedback. As always, if you want to be notified when I add the next video, you can subscribe to my channel. That's one way. Another way is to follow me on Twitter, at Enigmius1, or on Google+, plus, plus Enigmius1. As always, thanks for watching, guys, and take care.